Hello students, how are we doing today? Today in this video, we're going to discuss the idea of what a harmonic conjugate is. That introduction was sort of how I enter all my classes in real life, actually. I come in with a cup of coffee and I say, hello students, how are we doing today? Because I'm very excited about all this stuff. So I'm excited to share about harmonic conjugates with you all. All right, so let's recall. A function f, f, which maps a set omega into c, where omega is an open subset of c, is holomorphic if f prime of z exists for all z in omega. Okay, that's what it means to be holomorphic in omega. Now, we saw previously that if this condition holds, then, moreover, if we write f is u plus i v, the real part plus the imaginary part, then u x has to be equal to v y and u y has to be equal to negative v x. And these equations over here are the Cauchy-Riemann equations. These are the Cauchy-Riemann equations. Beautiful. And as a direct consequence of the Cauchy-Riemann equations, we know that both f, we know that both u and v are harmonic functions. So both u and v are harmonic. which means uxx plus uyy, the Laplacian of u is zero, and the Laplacian of v is equal to zero. Okay, beautiful. And so now what I wanna do is I want to focus on harmonic functions for a second, right? And so here's a question for us, question. If we're given, and remember also that u and v are both real valued because I have the i out here for the v, right? So u and v are both real valued. So given u, which maps omega into r, harmonic, so I'm given a harmonic function, can we find a harmonic v such that what? Such that u plus iv, such that this function f of z, which is u of x, y plus i, v of x, y, is holomorphic. Good, okay. All right, that's the question. If such a V exists, we call V the harmonic conjugate of U. Harmonic conjugate of U, okay? Let me give you a real simple example. Here's a simple example, and then I'll prove a general statement. Here's an example. I'm gonna give you a harmonic function. U of xy is x squared minus y squared. Let's just think about why that function x squared minus y squared is harmonic, okay? Well, the second derivative of this with respect to x is just gonna be two. The second derivative of this with respect to y is going to be negative two. Two plus negative two is zero, so that's a harmonic function. Then, consider the function v of xy which is just gonna be what? Which is just gonna be twice xy. Now you might say, why am I picking that function seemingly out of thin air? And the answer is that we already have seen how we can expand powers of z into x's and y's, and I know that that one is gonna come from z squared, right? So in particular, if we look at this function f of z, of course z is x plus iy, which is gonna be x squared minus y squared plus i, times 2xy, well, what is this? This is exactly just the complex number z squared. 
So in other words, and we know that z squared polynomials are analytic functions or holomorphic functions. So this function, 2xy is the what? That's the harmonic conjugate. Harmonic conjugate. Beautiful, okay? All right, and so now the question becomes is now you might say, well, wait a minute, actually, I could have done this. I could have taken this 2x plus y and added on to that a i, okay? And then all that changes over here is that I would have everything else would add an i, but z squared plus i is still a holomorphic function, right? So in other words, this method, I just, this guess method, or this ansatz method, or this I just thought about it method, generates a one parameter family of harmonic conjugates modulo up to a constant, basically. So that one parameter family is parameterized by a constant, okay? And so now here's the main proposition, proposition. Suppose that u maps omega into r is harmonic. And I'm going to sweep one technical rug under the technical detail under the rug for a few minutes. And that is I'm going I need to really assume I'm going to really think of omega as either c or a ball. Okay, in other words, and more generally, I want omega to be simply connected so I can do this argument, okay? Now, we're going to keep the idea of simply connected behind the scenes for a while because it's more topological in flavor, and we'll see later on that um, there's natural ways to think about this. But for our purposes, either the entire complex plane or a ball will work perfectly fine because those are definitely simply connected, okay? Then, U has a harmonic conjugate. Good news for us, right? It's actually sort of a remarkable theorem, right? The fact that we can concatenate two harmonic functions to form an analytic function, okay? Non-trivial. So proof, here's what we're gonna do. I'm gonna let V of X and Y be what? Be the integral from zero up to X, from zero up to Y. Okay, so far so good. And then I'm going to look at u sub x, the partial derivative of u with respect to x, evaluate the point x. Now, if you don't like this notation over here, if you think the notation is too clumsy, then what we can do is, and I, yeah, then what you can do is you can replace it with like a 1 to denote partial derivative, okay? And then zeta d zeta, okay? So you integrate the u partial derivative over here. And then plus some parameter function over here, I'm going to call parameter function phi of x, okay? And I'm going to choose this later. Okay. All right, excellent. And so now what I'm going to do is I'm going to differentiate v with respect to x, okay? So what is partial v partial x? Well, I need to use the Leibniz rule for differentiating under an integral sign. Of course, since u is harmonic, I know that it's at least twice, I know that it's twice differentiable in x. In particular, that allows me to pass through the derivative under the integral sign by, and this is a compact set over here, so we're in good shape, okay? So this is the integral from zero to y of uxx of x and zeta d zeta plus phi prime. Easy enough. Now, I know that uxx plus uyy is equal to zero, so I can replace this uxx in my integral with a negative uyy. So this is gonna be the integral from zero up to y of negative uyy of x and zeta d zeta plus phi prime of x, okay? Again, I'm using the fact that u is harmonic here. That's where the assumption comes into play, good. All right, now uh, I'm very good at integrating out derivatives, right? So in other words, I can integrate out those derivatives in the second slot, and so what will I get? I'm gonna get negative uy of x and zeta evaluated from zeta equals zero to zeta equals y, right? Plus phi prime. 
I'm just doing calculus now, right? Just ordinary calculus. And now this becomes what? This becomes a negative uy. So this is negative uy x and then what? x and then y. Beautiful. That's what we want. And then a plus uy x 0, if I plug in z equals 0, plus 5 prime of x. Like so. Excellent. So that's what that expression is equal to. Now, what do we want in order for this function v? What would, what would I want if u plus this function v to be analytic? I would need that vx is negative uy, right? Because ux is what? We know that ux is vy, and then vx has to be negative uy by cauchy riemann So I want this to be the only term we see. That's all I want. In other words, in particular, these terms over here, I want them to be what? Those terms over here must be 0. Okay. I can easily make that happen, though, because if I set that equal to 0, what we have? We'll have 5 prime of x, 5 prime of x. I want 5 prime of x, which I can choose. I can choose this later, so I can choose it now. That's how a lot of analysis goes, by the way. So in an analysis, it never hurts to add as many parameters to the problem as you possibly can and choose the parameters later to make sure your argument works. Okay, That's a good, good skill. Has to be what? Has to be negative ui. Negative ui of x and 0. So then to find phi, I will just integrate this with respect to x, right? Up to a constant, of course. So phi of x is the integral from 0 up to x of negative uy. Now that's my independent variable now, so I'm going to choose a zeta 0 d zeta. Excellent. I found it, right? So hence, what's v going to be? So hence v, your harmonic conjugate, v of x, y, is going to be what? It's going to be the integral from 0 to y of ux x zeta d zeta ux x zeta d zeta and then plus phi which is minus the integral from 0 to x of uy zeta 0 d zeta QED, we got it, right? And so in particular, I have this really nice formula. And so for those of you who want to compare this to like what you would do in vector calculus, you might sort of see some sort of similarities to what you do when you find vector potentials, right? So when we took our first course in vector calculus in Calc 3, we learned about vector potentials and scalar potentials, right? So in other words, this has a very similar flavor to that vector potential proof, so it's very good to go back and like review that idea and make sure that this idea of finding harmonic conjugate meshes with that idea of finding a vector potential in Calc 3. And so that will really sort of help you to see how the structure of the, the multivariable structure works into play in this. So in other words, we can always, in, in general, what are you going to do? In general, you're never going to actually plug, use this formula, plug in the formula, right? If I give you a function u and say find a harmonic conjugate, you could use this formula and it would work. But more realistically, if I give you a, a particular function, what you're going to do is you're going to say you're going to compute ux and uy, and then you're simply just going to integrate and check the consistency, right? So once I have ux, I can find v by integrating with respect to y up to a function of x. And then this equation over here gives you one more condition to find the function of x. So in principle, if you and we'll do we'll do another video where we basically do a whole bunch of examples of these things. It's actually they're they're fun problems to work on, right? They're basically like I, like I alluded to, they're like finding potential problems. And so in but what I want to hone in on is that this just proves harmonic conjugates exist, right? And existence results are great for us because it allows us to actually compute those, do those calculations and say, I'm confident that I can find an answer because I have a theorem that says that they will exist, right? Now, also what you want to think of in the back of your mind, when we start to discuss logarithms, we're going to return to this problem and say, if I look at the log of x squared plus y squared, that is a harmonic function and therefore it must have a harmonic conjugate. It has a harmonic conjugate, but it's a harmonic conjugate in a punctured disk and that's not simply connected. And so that idea, then we're going to really start to see like how the geometry of the region and this idea of like where the singularities of a function happen really sort of play an essential role in complex analysis. And so we'll continue our discussion with these harmonic conjugates in further videos. But in the meantime, thank you very much.